Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, Matt's going to be teaching you how to play spooky, scary skeletons. Now this arrangement is a lot of fun to play on ukulele, and I think it's going to be best suited for the seasoned intermediate player. And there's a few reasons why. The first one is that it is played with a swung rhythmic fill. So if you need a recap on the difference between playing with a straight fill versus a swung fill, you wanna check out this lesson. I'll also link it in the description box below. Now the second thing that makes it a little bit challenging is the tempo. It's played at a pretty brisk tempo and anytime we have something a little bit more upbeat, it adds a little bit more of a challenging element to it. And last but not least, there are a few bar chords throughout this arrangement. So if you need a recap on proper left hand form as it relates to barring, I'll put a couple lessons that we've done in the past in the description box below. So let's take a step back now. Let's talk a little bit about this lesson because in this video, Matt's gonna be teaching you how to play the entire arrangement. But if you wanna get the tabs to print off and follow along with, that's gonna be available at this link right here. Or you can go to the site, rockclass101.com, do a search for the song's name. Now also on that page will be the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a great feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a great asset in learning this song that much easier. All right, guys, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Matt to teach you how to play this. Don't forget to grab the high G ukulele, and I will catch you at the end of the video. Hello! In today's video, we're going to be learning a solo high G ukulele arrangement of spooky, scary skeletons. Let's go ahead and dive in with the intro. I'm going to bring the camera down. So to play this intro, what we're going to do here is we're going to play a D chord. Take your index finger, bar it all the way across the second fret, and add your pinky finger here on the fifth fret of the A string. Now as far as the right hand or playing hand technique goes, I like to use four finger picking for this, which means my thumb is going to be on the G string, index on the C string, middle on the E string, and ring on the A string. Going to super zoom in just for a moment here, a quick tip is try to have your thumb in front of the other fingers, with these fingers being a little bit more perpendicular to the strings. That can help get you a good tone as you're playing. Bring the camera back out a little bit. We're going to pluck our C string, then our E, then our G, then our A. Then we're going to take this shape and we're going to move it down one fret to be a C sharp major chord. One, 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 four. Still with the index bar and pinky here. We're going to do the same little in and out pattern we just did a moment ago. C string, E string, G string, and A string. And that is all of the first measure. And in time it should sound something like this. One and two and three and four and four. And it can help to do a little bit of a swing feel like I did there when I was playing it. So that one and is more of a one and two and three and four and that creates that really cool spooky sound. So after we've done that on the first measure, we go to the second measure here where we're going to play an F sharp minor chord. Now look at what you're already doing here with the C sharp. What you're going to do is you're going to take this index and you're going to collapse it to just be on the first fret here of the C string. You're going to leave your pinky where it is on the fourth fret of the A string. Take your middle finger, stack it over here to the second fret of the G string, and your ring finger here to the second fret of the E string. This can be a little bit of a stretch. That's okay. These two fingers, sometimes this is pulling a little bit, and it just takes some practice. It's kind of like yoga for your fingers. But we're going to do that same little in to out pattern. So we're going to play the C, E, G, and then the A, and then to finish this measure, we're gonna take that pinky off and play open on the A string. So measure two in time sounds something like this. Two and three and four and. And the two measures together, one and two, should sound something like this. Two and three and four and. Going into the third measure, it's exactly the same as measure one. Going from the D chord to the C sharp, so in time that sounds like this. Two and three and four and. 
And then going to the fourth measure here, pretty straightforward, we're going to go to that F sharp minor chord again, but instead of leaving the pinky here at four, we're gonna take it off. So it's two, one, two, zero with our middle index and ring fingers, pluck all four strings together. And measure four in time, pretty straightforward, two and three and four and. And measures three and four together, should sound something like this, two and three and four and. And the whole intro should sound something like this. This is measures one through four. Two and three and four and. And from here we go on to melody B, which is going to be kind of our main melody of the tune. We're gonna keep with the four finger picking and we're gonna keep with some familiar chord shapes. We're gonna start here with the same D chord with the index barred and the pinky here on five. We're gonna pluck all four strings. Then we're gonna play five on the A by itself. Now, that can be tricky with the ring finger because the ring finger, well, it's, it's a difficult finger to enunciate. So it's okay if you want to use your middle or even your index finger there just to play it a little bit louder. Just make sure when you're playing all four strings, you're stationing one finger per fret. And after I've played that, I'm going to go to the C sharp chord by sliding this down one fret. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pluck all four strings and then just the A string there at the fourth fret. So in time, measure five sounds like this. Two and three and four and. and. Then we go on to measure six. We're gonna go to that F sharp minor, the same one at, that we ended the intro with. So middle finger here on the second fret of the G string, index here on the first fret of the C string, and the ring finger here on the second fret of the E string, leaving the A string open. Two, one, two, zero. Pluck just the G, C, and E strings. Then pluck the A string. And then pluck the E string and then the E string one more time. So in time, measure six sounds something like this. Two and three and four and. And the two measures together, five and six, should sound something like this. Two and three and four and. Going into the seventh measure here, it's going to be almost the same as the fifth measure. We're going to start with that D chord, play all four, and then we're going to play the A string again. The difference here though is it's an eighth note to a quarter note, a dotted quarter note. So instead of it being one, two, it's going to go one and. So we get that little bit of syncopation by playing that five on the A a little bit earlier with this measure. And we hold that five just a little bit longer before we then move to the C sharp. Same deal, slide down, bar across one, four with the pinky, and play all four strings, and play the four on the A again. So in time, seven sounds like this, two and three and four and. And that is really getting that, that little bit of syncopation can be hard, especially at a slow speed to get with seven. So the thing to practice is playing on the D on one and then counting the and and playing it. So it goes one and two and then the three there. So, so three, four. As we go on into measure eight now, we're gonna play that F sharp minor we've been playing several times. Pluck our G, C, and E strings together. And then we're going to pluck our C, E, G as this little turnaround to go back into the next part. So in, in time measure eight sounds something like this. Two and three and four and. And the pair of measures, seven and eight, should sound something like this. Two and three and four and. From here we go on to measure nine. Good news, measure nine is exactly the same as measure five was. The same D chord where we pluck all four, then the A, same C sharp chord, moving that finger down, and then pluck all four, just the A string. Exactly the same part in time sounds like this. Two and three and four and. And then we go on to measure 10. Measure 10 is almost the same as measure six was. We're gonna start with that same F sharp minor, two, one, two, zero. We're gonna pluck the same G, C, E strings, play the same open A, 
But this time it's a quarter note, and then we're gonna play two on the E and let that ring for the measure. So you'll notice it's like an easier version of measure six, which is kind of cool. In time, measure 10 should sound something like this. Two and three and four and... And in time, nine and 10 should sound something like this. Two and three and four and... Going into my favorite part of the song, measure 11. I love this little turnaround. We're gonna start by playing a D6. Just have that index finger barred across the second fret all the way. You're gonna pluck your G, C, E strings together. And then you're gonna play the A string. And then you're going to move this bar down to one, but there is a little bit of a trickiness here. You want to ideally get it so that you come off the A string. See how I'm bending at this knuckle to get that A string open? If you can do this, this is the preferred way to play it because what you do is you pluck the G, C, E together and then the open A. Now, if this is too difficult for you, it's okay to just move the bar down and just take off the finger at that open A. Either way is fine. I like having it on. So you get that resonance with that dissonance, but either way can work. In time measure 11 sounds like this. Two and three and four and. And then measure 12 looks familiar because it's the same as eight. The F sharp minor, hold it, and then the C, E, G. It's the exact same thing that we played on measure eight. So in time, 12 should sound like this. Two and three and four and. And so that you can hear it, here's measures 11 and 12 as a pair. It should be something like this. Two and three and four and... And so that you can hear it, here is all of melody B. Now, at this point, we do repeat. So what happens is we play 5 through 12 twice all the way through. And that's going to sound something like this when you put it all together. Two and three and four and. Here we go on to melody C. To start this, we're going to hold our middle and index fingers where they were, take our ring finger off, so you see I have two and one, then the pinky is going to come here onto the fourth fret of the A string. I'm going to pluck all four strings for this A chord, and then I'm going to move my pinky up to five, back down to four, back up to five. That can be a bit of a stretch, it's okay if your fingers come off, but try to leave them on, try to get that stretch. In time, measure 13 should sound something like this. Two and three and four and. Going into the next measure here of 14, take this pinky, slide it up to seven. Take the index finger, add it as a bar across the fourth fret. And we're gonna pluck all four strings together. And then we're gonna take our pinky, slide it up to nine, back down to seven. And then we're going to play five and we can use our middle finger here on that fifth fret. So in time, 14 sounds like this. Two and three and four and. And the pair here, 13 and 14, should sound something like this. Two and three and four and. Going into the next pair here, we're gonna go into measure 15. We're gonna play this F sharp minor. The way we're going to play this one is index here on the fourth fret of the A string, middle finger here on the fifth fret of the E string, ring finger here on the sixth fret of the C string. And get ready with your pinky because after we pluck these three strings, the C, E, and A on six, five, and four, we're gonna take the pinky and cross it over to seven on the G. Isn't that cool? And then we're gonna play the four on the A again. And then we need to play seven on the E, so that pinky needs to jump now over to the seventh fret of the E string. I like to hold these three fingers the whole time there to get that continued resonance. So in time, measure 15 should sound something like this. 
two and three and four and four. going into the 16th measure d minor chord to play this you just bar across the fifth fret on the c e and a pluck the c and e together notice i'm using the index finger here for that bar and i'll play the a string and then i just take my hand off and play open on the a pretty easy measure 16. in time two and three and four and and the pair here of 15 and 16 together should sound something like this two and three and four and going on to measure 17 we're going to go back to that d6 chord that we played uh, earlier which is just the bar all the way across the second fret and we're going to play the C, E, and A together. And then I'm going to take my ring finger out on four of the A. Back down to two, taking that ring off. Back up to four. Pretty easy measure in time. Should sound something like this. Two and three and four and... Going into measure 18, we're going to move into one of my favorite chords on the ukulele, G7. But played in maybe a little bit different of a way because what you're going to do is you're going to slide up to the fifth fret with your bar just on the C, E, and the A strings with your index finger. Take your ring finger, add it here on the seventh fret of the E string, and then you're going to pluck all four strings together. Love this G7. After I've plucked all four, I'm going to play seven on the A by taking my pinky and squeezing it in underneath this ring finger. And then I'm going to take it off, playing the five on the A. There's a little bit of a tricky part because this bar can kind of get wobbled when you bring the pinky in. If that happens, it's okay. Just make sure that when you're taking the pinky off, you're locking it back in to get a good tone on the five. And then we take it off and play open on the A string. So in time, measure 18 sounds something like this. Two and three and four and... And the pair here of 17 and 18 together should sound something like this. Two and three and four and... And going into the last two bars of this C melody section, we're going to play a B minor six. To play this, kind of a tricky chord, I think probably the hardest in the song. We're going to take your middle finger and you're going to bar it across the second fret of the C, E, and A strings. Then you're going to take your index finger and place it on the first fret of the G string. Now, quick tip, it does help to kind of bar with the index finger here. Just note that you don't have to be a perfect bar because the only thing it needs to hit is the one on the G. This middle finger needs to be a good bar over those three. This index just needs to hit that one. Tricky chord. But after we've played all four strings by plucking them, we're going to add four with the pinky. And then we're going to go up to five with the pinky. If you have to take your hand off at that point, it's okay. You definitely will by the next one because the next note is moving all the way up to fret nine with the pinky. Just slide it up from five. So in time measure 19 looks like this. Two and three and four and... And once you've slid up to this nine, the next measure here on 20 goes to this C sharp seven chord. Now, big trick. This pinky finger is just going to go down one fret to eight. And you need to make sure you do that and then build the chord around it. What I like to do is slide the pinky down there. And then I like to bring my index up to fret six. And then I bring my ring finger to fret eight. That's going to be eight of the C string after the index is on six of the G string. And then the middle finger kind of falls into place here on seven of the E. Tricky chord, six, eight, seven, eight, but a beautiful C sharp seven built all around that pinky. So that's something to practice is just getting comfortable going from that nine to then that chord. And at the end of this measure, we just slide down and play four on the A string with our pinky. So after doing that full big uh, C sharp seven chord when we're all up here, we just slide that pinky down to four. So in time, 20 sounds something like this. Two and three and four and... And the pair here, 19 and 20, sounds something like this. Two and three and four. And so that you can hear it, here is the entirety of that melody C section. Should sound something like this. 
two, and three, and four, and... Pretty neat, right? Now here's the good news. If you've made it this far, there's nothing new except for the very last chord of the song because it's all repetition from here. When we go on to melody D, melody D is actually the exact same melody that we played on melody B, except for the very end of it without a repeat. Um, otherwise, it's the same thing going through, which is kind of neat. So when we start here on melody D, measure 21, is exactly the same as measure 5 was. Measure 22, exactly the same as measure 6 was. Going into measure 23, exactly the same as measure 7, and then measure 24, exactly the same as measure 8 was, right? So you can hear that this is the same stuff. Let's go and play those four bars together just so that you can get a good idea. Something like this, 2 and 3 and 4 and... Going into measure 25, exactly the same as measure 9. Going into measure 26, the same as 10. Going into 27, exactly the same as 11. But then going into 28, it's a little different than 12. It's actually just easier. Instead of playing the F sharp minor and then doing the little turnaround, there's no turnaround. You just hit the F sharp minor, and you hold it for the four beats. So measure 28 is just a little bit different. All that that is, just measure 28 by itself. Two and three and four and two and three and four. And the four bars together so that you can hear it. 25, 26, 27, 28 sound like this. Two and three and four and... neat right so you can hear the whole thing here's all of melody d which is exactly the same except for the last few notes as melody b was should sound something like this two and three and four and And then from here, we go on to the outro. And good news, this outro is three quarters exactly the same as the intro. And what I mean by that is measure 29 is exactly the same as measure one of the intro, the same D chord to C sharp chord. And then the next part here is that same F sharp minor we played on measure two, exactly the same part. And then measure 31, exactly the same as measure three of the intro. So those three bars are exactly the same as what we played. The only difference here is at the very end here at measure 32, instead of being just like measure four, well, it's its own measure. We're just gonna slide all the way up and play nine on the C, E, and A strings together to end the song, which is kind of cool. So 32 sounds something like this, two and three and four and... Nice and straightforward, right? And the whole ending sequence, which again, is the same as one, two, three with this new bar, sounds something like this. Now, I wanna preface, you'll notice that I have a little bit of a delay as I go from the end of 31 into 32. I think it sounds good to do that. I think it sounds good to uh, let that last note of 31 ring a little bit longer than it should and then slide up. That sounds something like this, going all the way through these four bars. Two and three and four and four.
and there you have it. There is the outro to this awesome tune. Bring the camera up. This is a really fun tune to play using that four finger style. That ring finger can be problematic when you're learning to pluck with it. Just stick with it. Try to get a really good emphasis on that A string when you can with it. And remember when the A string's played alone, it's okay to move down and use your middle finger or your index. If you watch the video of me playing, I do that sometimes with my middle finger just because it gets me a tone that I look for, right? But it's nice to be able to use any finger at any time. So practice it with all these different variations. But as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you next time on the next lesson here on Rock Class 101. Thanks so much. All right, guys. So this week's ukulele lesson was a lot of fun. This is a perfect tune for the Halloween season. And I gotta say too, it is a really great challenge for those of you who are kind of transitioning over to more advanced level arrangements. So it's a good challenge in that regard. Now, before we wrap up, I do want to give you a friendly reminder that if you wanted to get the tabs to print off and keep free records, that was available at this link right here, or you can go to the site rockclass101.com, do a search for the song's name. Don't forget too, on that page was the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer, so you can literally hit play, watch that tab scroll across in real time, highlight bars, loop sections, slow it down, all that fun jazz. So guys, again, I hope you enjoyed learning this tune, and we will catch you in the next lesson. Take care.